Counselors in the car getting coffee. Counselors in the car getting coffee? Getting coffee, yes. It's like such an original idea it's if Jerry a, Seinfeld it's hadn't a, thought of it. I hope we don't get a cease and desist. Well, I don't know about you, but I am a counselor. I am also a counselor. We're actually therapists. And you know what we are? In the car! We're in a car. And you know what? We're gonna get some coffee. Well, I don't have coffee. any coffee. Counselors in the car getting I mean, how do you coffee. Not drink coffee. I do you're a drink counselor coffee. In the car drinking coffee. Well, I thought we were gonna go get some in a drive thru. We're uh, answering questions. Listener questions. People who've written in. People who've written in. So I need my glasses. I do need my glasses. All right. All right. I think we can do that. Here, so here we go. Uh, would I be a jerk if I asked my therapist who they voted for? I'm seeing a new therapist for the first time soon, and I need to make sure that they're safe. Can I ask straight out what their politics are and what their stance is on LGBTQ rights? Interesting question. Yes. Well, me. I would definitely say if you had looking for a specific therapist that needs uh, or has experience in a certain field like LGBTQ affirming therapy, that is 100% appropriate to ask. Do they have experience in this area? I agree. Right? 100%. In terms of the political one, um, I don't know if every therapist will tell you. Mm -hmm. If I was a therapist being asked that, I would want to know why they'd want to know that. that but I do, in today's political line, uh, landscape, I do understand. I, I totally understand people that. People wanting to know. And I've had actually clients who tried to censor themselves when they think, when they're questioning whether my politics align with theirs. That's what I worry about. Is yeah. That I, is that why should my, how I feel about something politically impact how my client feels about it? Mm -hmm. So I don't think, I've had clients that feel have very different political views in mind. And we're still able to get really good work done because how I feel about certain politics doesn't, you know, isn't really important. Not part of that session. How I feel about my client, what's best for my client, and what values she has or he mm -hmm. has. That, I think, is more important. I think that's a very you know, good what point. Do you, what do you just starting the conversation on the client's end, asking that question, can help you can feel safer. I don't think there's much you can bring up to a therapist that... that would be like you can't bring that up to your therapist. I think that's part of having a good therapist is someone you can have an open dialogue with. So it's not like you can't right. bring this up. Yeah, and LGBTQ affirming care, you can bring that up when you interview them on the phone for the first time. Absolutely. Because Whether it's to... LGBT or substance abuse use uh -huh. or you have the experience with couples or you have experience with postpartum depression, whatever that is, that's that's a vital, it's like one of the main questions I think you got to bring up when, when you're first meeting with someone. Yeah, so you feel safe. Right. It's um, a good question. It was I'm glad a, people ask that. Yeah, always it was a have good to question. bring these things up. Okay, here's one that I have had. Uh, I used to think my trauma was a big deal, but I bet my therapist has heard much worse things, and now I feel stupid and undeserving of therapy. Um, if I had a nickel for every time. Yeah. Like, no, this isn't big as somebody else, you know. Yeah, you don't want to negate your own feelings. You don't want to negate your own trauma. Well, and everybody... It, it, we, we, you know, it's it just minimizes how someone feels. Yeah. Re regardless, because everyone's got their trauma, everyone has their stuff and s things they struggle with. But to say, well, mine's not as bad as someone else, so I shouldn't complain, or I, right. I can't complain. That's just not fair to anybody, especially yeah. you. Then you're pushing down your own. Yeah. You're stifling you're yourself. Minimizing it. Yeah. One hundred percent minimizing it. So, yes, therapists hear a lot of different things, but it's all how this is your experience. Right. You know, this is your experience and how you're dealing with it and coping with it. And it, it's important to you, you know. Yeah. And therapists I, don't sit around comparing, well, it's not as bad as Susie. Or, you know, that, that's not right. something we've ever, you know. I, you don't want to judge yourself. And I've had a lot of people who've had significant trauma who will still minimize it. Significant. I mean, some significant people, trauma. Some people with the most trauma, I find like, which is part of the trauma response, I think, are the ones who sometimes repress it the most and, and mm -hmm. dismiss it the most. Well, so, you know, so it's got to be worse for somebody else. It's got to be, able, but they're dealing with heavy, heavy, significant trauma. Hundred yeah. percent. So you could also voice that concern to your therapist, so they could validate you and that. believe them when they say, "Yes, your experience matters." There's this is not a you know as therapists, we're not keeping a track of who has the worst ther trauma. Whatever we're feeling matters. It could be the smallest thing. Mm -hmm. And if it's a big deal to you, it's it's significant to you and it has to be brought up. That's that's why you're working with your therapist. Right. Do you think it's weird if I ask my therapist if she can turn around when I'm talking about my trauma? I feel like it would be too hard if we were making eye contact for me to be able to speak clearly and not break down. 
I would have to pretend I'm alone. Does that make sense? It no, does to me. No, it's not too weird, and yes, it makes sense. Whatever you need to do to get these feelings out. It kind of goes back to that, what we were saying about the trauma response of minimizing yeah. our feelings. So mm -hmm. because I think it's weird, which, I don't know, it, you're talking about trauma when you haven't, that's, that's, that's huge and that's difficult. Yes. So if that's what makes you feel more comfortable, I've had kids, I've had adults write things down because yes. they couldn't verbalize it. Yeah, I've had a lot know? of people write things down. Um, so if that's what works for you and that's where you're going to feel safer, 100%, 100%, you know, but I would be careful of, for whoever wrote this question about, you know, am I weird? You know, that judgmental right. thought, like, you know. Is, you could say, you know, just be careful of how you judge yourself because it's not weird. Everyone, you know, might feel differently about that. Yeah, that's your process. Exactly. That's your process. And talk about it. Say, listen, I'm really uncomfortable saying this, but I want to. I feel certain things I want to bring up, but I want to look at you while I'm saying this, or I want to turn around, or that's right. Yeah, it's and again. This is your therapy. Yeah. You have a. You, no one's telling you what to do to heal. You know, like you're a part of that process, and I think that's really important that people think, "Oh, I just got to do what they tell me." No. No, it's your this safe what, space. This is what you're comfortable with. And that's a good point. That it's your safe space and it's collaborative. It's whatever works for you. A hundred percent. You are the most important person in that room. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna stop and have some coffee. Some coffee. Because we're because we're having that. We are counselors and cars getting coffee apparently. Can I follow up with my desired provider to check on the wait list? I did some very particular and specific research and picked out a provider and got placed on her wait list yes. at the beginning of December. Yes. Oh, although I wasn't in crisis. Yes. 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 Advocate for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Yes. I love when a client will call me or I have on a wait list or something like, do you have any? It shows how motivated they are. It makes right. me also want to like, all right, let me, let me see what I can do because obviously this person really wants the help, is really motivated, and those are the kind of clients I love working with, so, yeah. yes. And this, this uh, the writer says, well, I'm not in active crisis now. Okay, but they feel like their mental health is declining. So advocate for yourself. Again, I think you could be minimizing. So yes. let them know, let the person you know how you're feeling. You don't have to wait to be in crisis to have, to get, to, to get some counseling. A hundred percent. You know, being very, I, I say this all the time, is how do we be really deliberate with it? Like, mm -hmm. We don't have to wait till there's a crisis. Let's we see that we we might need something. Let's let's start working on it now before we're, the house is on fire. Right? Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I'm going for counseling for the first time in my life. What questions do I need to prepare so my therapist can understand my situation better? They should all still have a lot of questions for you. I have a lot of questions. Yeah. For you. I do think it's okay though to also come in on your first session with, with a lot of questions for them. A hundred percent. Like say, you know, listen, what is your experience with helping someone with this the codependence issue. issues that I'm having right now? What, you know, do you, you know, do you think this is something you can help me with or is this something out of your comfort zone? Do you think, like, mm -hmm. it's okay to come prepared with questions because you're new to this. So why wouldn't right. you, you're not supposed to know everything. Right. Do, do, uh, how do you typically work? Do you give homework? Um, how often do you think we'll be seeing one another? Whatever questions you have, you want to see if you can establish a rapport with this person. That's what I think is very important. I do think, though, the one question you might want to be prepared for, which is something I ask, is, is what do you want to get out of this experience mm -hmm. for therapy? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, what being your goals prepared are. what the goal is. You know, yeah. like, is it to develop more coping skills? Is, is it to, you know, and are these reasonable, obtainable, and realistic goals but I, that's I mean I don't know how you think right. but I think that's would be a good way to be prepared this is what I'm looking for from therapy uh, yeah that's something to even ask yourself before you're going in how you'll know that you're seeing progress because it might not be you know an immediately an immediate total change so how will you know that you're seeing that's why I also forward think, momentum I also think and this might be a little off topic but that's why journaling is so nice when you do counts like mm -hmm. having a way of looking back over like when you started and then six weeks later going back and seeing where you were in certain things and you know it does give you a sense of feeling like you're making progress and you're doing well because you can say oh well six weeks ago I was writing that I don't really feel that same way anymore. This yeah. is something that happened somebody else wrote in is it bad if I haven't done my therapy homework? 
No. no. This is your Many work. Many people don't. Nobody's making you do anything. Yeah. Like this, it, it's for you to do it. And some weeks you might feel motivated to do it and want to do it. And other weeks might be too much or life happens and kids have appointments and all that stuff. But right. yeah. be gentle with yourself. And let them know what kind of homework works for you and what doesn't. Some people will hate journaling. Some people will love it. Some people will love having something to do. It's a really measurable thing during the week, and other people will not want anything like that to do. So that's a good conversation to have with your therapist, too. One more. One more. Last question. I'm looking for something good. This person wrote in that they felt guilty because they were living uh, with their significant other at their parents' house. They were supposed to be there six months, but it got to be about two years, so they started to really, really push for them to get out, the significant other agreed that they would go and rent for a while. And now um, this person feels guilty that they got what they wanted. I think it's a good thing. Like it's it, if you're advocating for yourself mm -hmm. and you're not used to it, and it's it's supposed to be uncomfortable. That's a good point. Right? It's yeah. you know like sometimes practicing the right. You know, mental health and taking care of ourselves and asserting ourselves in our relationships or in our or prioritizing our mental health, it doesn't always feel good because it could be very unnatural for us. So it's okay to be uncomfortable with that. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. And discomfort often signals change. Yes. You know, growth happens Dis when we're uncomfortable. Discomfort is good. You know, discomfort is a it's a good motivator, and I think it's a good thing. All right, All right. so uh, this is Seth uh, Council in the car getting coffee. Put any questions that you have in the comments below. Uh, hit the bell and to follow, subscribe. Follow us on MySpace. Isn't that a thing still? No, it's not. Okay, goodbye.